Explain, first of all, the, the main principle of CPR. Sure. So we're going to do what we call a primary survey. So the first thing we do is we find someone lying on the floor. We need to ascertain whether they're responsive and whether they're breathing or not. So we're going to start to approach them. Just make sure that the area is safe around because your safety is really important as well. And then as we approach them, we're going to see if we can arouse, uh, rise them. So we're going to just ask them the question, hello, can you hear me? Open your eyes, open your eyes. Um, they may not respond to you at this point, so we can try and wake them up using a pain stimulus. So all you're going to do is you're going to try and squeeze their shoulder muscles and see if that wakes them up. If at this point they've not woken up, then they are an unresponsive casualty. So if you're on your own, you need to now go off to call 999 for an emergency ambulance. If there's someone with you, then send them up at this point uh, and ask them to come back with a defibrillator if there's one available as well. The next thing we're going to do is just look. We don't want to get uh, close up to our patients at the moment because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we want to see, are they breathing normally? Can you see the chest going up and down? If they're not breathing normally or they're not breathing at all, then this is the time we start chest compressions. So I'm going to put one hand on top of the other and I'm going to interlock my fingers. I'm going to push, uh, place the palm of my hand in the center of their chest, just in between their nipples. I'm kneeling beside the, the patient and I'm going to push down hard and fast. And I'm going to do that at this rate so at about 100 to 120 beats per minute, about the same beat as a song, Staying Alive. And we're going to just keep doing that until the paramedics arrive and they tell us that they're ready to take over. So it was all about pushing hard and fast, middle of the chest. And we're, all we're going to do is chest compressions. We're not going to be doing the rescue breaths. Uh, so explain that to us. And, and first of all, is there any danger in doing that? Is that? If the person's unresponsive, is that a pretty safe thing? To, you can't really hurt them any further by doing that. Absolutely. Chest compressions is the most important intervention we can do in a patient in this condition. Um, so please don't be fearful of doing it. Uh, you, you may see that the chest shape changes as you potentially break ribs. That's absolutely fine. In some cases, that's particularly normal. Um, but be assured that what you're doing is you're pushing on the heart, you're squeezing blood around the body, and that's what needs to happen to save this patient's life. What you can do to try and uh, protect yourself a bit more, you know, in the current climate is just place a face covering um, or a, a um, tea towel over the patient's uh, nose and mouth. And again, that's not going to harm them in any way. It's just an additional layer to protect yourself. What about mouth to mouth? And is that not part of CPR, mouth to mouth resuscitation? So mouth to mouth resuscitation, we were actually slowly phasing out even prior to the pandemic beginning in terms of the advice that we put out to general members of the public, um, because we acknowledge that there's really good evidence for compression only CPR to save lives. And actually, members of the public, quite rightly, may be a little bit more reluctant to do the rescue breath. So if we can uh, just spread the basic message about doing compression only CPR, then hopefully people will feel more comfortable with um, undertaking that intervention. Uh, and explain defibrillators briefly as well, if you, if, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, because if there is one there and you're not trained to use it, is it possible to use a defibrillator to, to start someone's heart as, an, as a non-expert? Absolutely, absolutely. Defibrillators are really intuitive and are really clear in how to use them. So if you have one available, if a bystander's gone and brought you one, or you see, someone, you see one immediately around you, grab it, open the box up and turn the machine on and then just do exactly what it tells you. It will have two pads on it. It will tell you exactly and show you on the pads exactly where you stick them to the patient's bare chest. Uh, and then that will allow the patient to receive a shock uh, if the machine deems that to be the appropriate thing to do. Um, the machine will tell you exactly how you deliver the shock, when to stand clear, so you'll be kept well safe as well.